Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode eight of the Deviating Tangents podcast. I'm your host. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Deviating Tangents, where we are super professional here. I'm Scott, and this is Connor. I am Beef Shanks Shanks McFlurry. Oh, all all right. (laughs) Flank Steak Mc... uh, Corn cob, real a real manly man's name. <laughs> yeah, stick brightly. <laughs> Welcome to Deviating Tangents. Welcome to the Deviating Tangents podcast. Now, episode eight, the episode where I, Connor, and I mean, I'm I'm just I'm Scott, uh, where we talk about debt. Yeah. Uh, uh, too many people don't realize just how much society is built on debt. We've, I think, and it's, it's, you said society, and it's not just like a cultural thing, it's the entire world. Yes, yes. So, um, the way money works, uh, especially in our fractional reserve banking system, uh, the money that you deposit into your bank, uh, the bank will then loan out to other people and and based on however much cash they have on their books they're, they're allowed to loan out some percentage of, of of money so like let's say that you deposit a hundred bucks and then they're allowed to the lo- bank the bank can now loan a hundred dollars yes to someone that needs a hundred dollars mm-hmm as long as they can, as long as that person can pay back the hundred dollars, yes, and usually more, which mm-hmm. is called interest. But yep. we're not talking about that. And and what the result of that is, your hundred dollars is now providing two hundred dollars worth of value. So there's the the hundred bucks that you deposited and the hundred bucks that the bank loaned out to someone else. And then if if that person wants to also deposit that same hundred bucks into a different bank. And then that bank, you know, does the same thing as the first bank. Well, then your hundred bucks is going farther and farther and farther. But all of that cycles back to owing that hundred dollars, which three steps removed is now three, four hundred dollars. Yeah. Back to the original chain. And it's, it's this circle of debt that fuels our economy. Um, and the economy of every other superpower in the world. Yeah, so so because we are such a massive economy, because we are the world's reserve currency, whatever we do affects everyone else. Welcome to the power of the USD. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, what would life be like if there was no such thing as debt? Yeah, So so what would happen if you didn't have bills let's say your car was completely paid off your house is completely paid off uh let's say there's universal base basic income let's say you don't need to work uh, all of your basic needs are met luxuries are still luxuries but you don't need to work to survive to survive yes like again if you want that nice car yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to pay money for that nice car, but yeah. to be able to afford living a basic living arrangement and food, yeah, you're taken care of. Yeah. Um, how how would the world change? Um, we don't profess to know. Yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. we're just spitballing if it were nicer. So so something like this has never happened before because you know the the bankers happen to 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 profit very well on a system that's built on debt so they have no incentive to change it um but what if it did what what if there was no debt what if there was no fractional reserve banking this is all hypothetical we have no real basis for we're just gonna spitball ideas of what could be what would people do if their free time was really that If, if if it wasn't just Oh, hey, this is recovery time before I need to go back to work. Because that's what that really is. Downtime is downtime. Yeah. You can't do anything with your downtime anymore. The working world has made it... The corporate working world has made it so that... And you, you, anytime you spend not at work is recovering for more work. Or, or like, doctor's appointments and things like that. Yeah. 
Uh, but no, let, let's talk happy things. Let's talk creations. What would you do if you could pursue passion projects without worrying about failing, without worrying about you know spending the the time and money and resources on something that I'm worrying about failing. I think it's being able to spend time doing that without being afraid. Yeah, that, that that's also like a, you can be allowed to screw something up and all right, I screwed up. I'll either recoup and try again or I'll just move on to something else. You didn't sink a bunch of money that See, could have gone into something else. Right. That that that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um in in today's world you essentially cannot fail. You, you you can't afford to fail. So a lot of people just don't take those risks. Yeah. We live in a very safe society. Yeah. I but mean, some people don't. Yeah. Th- th- there there are some innovators out there who, who strike it big with, with passion projects. Um, the, the, the field of robotics is, is taking off. Yeah. Um, but no, like, uh, look at look at Team Seas. So so we're we're cleaning up the ocean with you know just just things that random everyday people have have made. Yeah. And and thanks to um, strides in the maker space with with like three D printing and and you know, more people learning how to solder, be getting uh, better access to materials, better access to parts. We can do things now that were thought to be completely impossible. Like, like we, we've, we've heard about, you know, the, the great garbage island for years and years and years, and our our method of dealing with it up until now was to Not deny look its it. existence. Yeah. But you know we kind of have to live on this planet, so let's let's clean it up. If 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 we have the means to do it, why not? That's not to bring this back into a place of realism for a second, but that's the kind of stuff I hate about. First of all, I have a problem with the bourgeois in general. Mm-hmm. And so it's like you see like the billionaire class, and they're like, oh, we're getting invent. Like Elon Musk wants to terraform Mars. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's cool, but I don't want to terraform Mars to exactly. replace Earth if we can fix where we are already. We, we we shouldn't just you know use up a planet and then move to a new one. That that's we are not Galactus. That that is a terrible terrible thing. Yeah, we should you know we're giving this world to the next generation. We should ensure that it's a world that's worth giving to the next generation. Yeah. We should ensure there is a next generation to, to give it to because at, at the rate we're going, everything's just going to be on fire and everyone's going to die. Everything's on fire and people are dying anyway. The, the, but, the, the fucking ocean was on fire and they want to keep drilling for oil. What the hell? Yeah. That's like, I don't want to get, I don't want to get political or religious on this show. We've done that enough in previous yeah, episodes. Yeah. But so there's this if you grow up in a christian belief system you are taught and raised to believe that god created this beautiful earth for you to inhabit he made it specifically for you because he loves you but why can't we be expected to take care of it we he made god made this earth for you and it's like oh well it's not my problem yeah it is it's yours and everybody else's problem when somebody else is, uh, like, dirtying up the beaches and the ocean water and, like, polluting lakes and stuff. There was a... What was it I saw the other day? It was... It wasn't on TikTok, but it was, like, TikTok adjacent. Hmm. Where there was a video of, like... Because you see it all the time. You go to beaches. If you go to Myrtle Beach, it's a mess all the time. Hmm. And it's just, like, you see trash, and it's just a little bit of trash strewn about here and there, and you go, well, it's not my trash, it's not my problem. Yeah. And there's this guy that spent, like, all day going up one, just one beachfront, just cleaning up everything he saw. It's like, it's not my trash, but it's my beach. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we all have to live on this planet. We, we should you know, make it a planet worth living on. Exactly. You know, the, these uh, these big corporations want to, you know, oh hey, we'll we'll just pay a carbon tax. But realistically, what that's doing is is 
just that's just the cost of doing business yeah. that they then pass on to the consumer. There are some things you can't just throw money at. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the hole in the ozone layer yeah. when that was a bigger issue. Yeah. You couldn't just let, oh, there's a hole in the ozone layer. Somebody should pay for that. It's yeah. like, we are paying for it. We're paying for it in like radiation and yeah. global warming. So so what, what a carbon tax is really doing is taking out a loan versus the the planet's natural resources and and put to the next generation so we have to pay to fix all of that and it can't be repaid with money we, we need to actually fix shit yeah um for for years and years and years um recycling just didn't happen because there was no money in actually recycling yeah and and recently, um, they've they've discovered a commercially viable way to turn plastic back into oil. Yeah, but we shouldn't have had to have gotten to that step. Right. I mean, not necessarily. I, I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. I guess I'll elaborate. We shouldn't have had to find a way to make it commercially viable. Right. Yes. Before we started yeah. doing it. Yeah. But, like, like if. The, the, the main tenets of recycling is reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce your intake, reuse what you can, and then convert everything you can back into its base parts. If yes. Possible. And, and you know, in in a nation of excess in, that, that we live in, yeah. we're just skipping all three of them. Yeah. And, and, and everything, we, and it's jettisoning everything else into space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wozniak's actually starting a, um, a space garbage program. Yeah. Like to clean up space debris and all that. Which there's, is a, cool. there's a phenomena I haven't been able to experience in a long time. Um, if you live or have access to an area that's like really like dark at night, mm-hmm. like um, it, just out in the countryside where there are no lights, mm-hmm. uh, light pollution is like way more pervasive than it seems. Mm-hmm. And when I say pollution, people think pollution are like, oh, like smog. Smog is like actually detrimental to the air and stuff. Light pollution is different because you're creating an artificial light source in a place where during a specific time, there's not supposed to be a light source that bright. Mm-hmm. So the reason why the sky looks black at night is because you're living, if you live in a suburban area, you are adjacent to cities that are lighting up the sky and the dust in the sky, which is creating this dark atmosphere. If you can go out into the middle of the country where there's nothing and it turns night, the moon comes out, the stars come out, there are no corporations, there are no factories, there are no businesses to be running high spec lights late at night. And you look up at the sky, it's this beautiful navy blue and you can see like the stars and nebula swirling around in an infinite beautiful cosmos. I miss being able to do that. Me too. And, and, when you when you really look into the science of it, so stars are just giant balls of fire, millions balls of gas burning millions yeah. of miles away. Exactly, and and with with a light source so close, you know, you're on the planet where the light source is. It just drowns out that that comparatively faint light. Yeah, and you just. You can't see it i i I miss looking at constellations and things that that used to be how we would navigate yep we did an episode of on this like a couple couple weeks ago uh the idea of like all of greek mythology was told in stories using constellations solely as a means for sailors to figure out their way around yeah no i miss being able to like stargaze and stuff what was it? I was talking to Jess about this the other day. One of my favorite things is when people look at like the dawn star and the evening star. It's like, that's the brightest star in our solar system. That's the planet Venus. You're looking at Venus. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and you know, the, the, the brightest star in our solar system is the sun. Or at least in our immediate galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, speaking of the sun, so we got some problems here. Um, so I, I don't know if, if anyone has heard, but a couple of weeks ago, um, 
the northern lights were, were actually much more southern than they usually are yeah uh, that was because of solar storms and, and uh, electromagnetic radiation just splitting off from the sun. And uh, Kyle Hill has a video about this. Watch it for more, for more information. It, it, it's been a while since I've seen it. But um, so essentially, the sun goes through major cycles and minor cycles. And up until now, we've been relatively lucky because we've not really been in a major cycle. Yeah. Um, right about now, we're in a major cycle within a, a, a smaller major cycle. So, so like, the, the chance for solar flares and things like that to happen are, are at their all-time high. Yeah. And we are uniquely vulnerable more so now than ever before because of how interconnected we are. So um, the way the internet works, essentially, is... It's this large series of tubes. Al Gore told me. (laughs) So there's uh, undersea cables um, across the Atlantic Ocean there. And, you know, they're they're just thin copper cables wrapped up in a little bit of insulation... But, you know, there, there's hundreds of thousands of them all, all, all bundled into this, you know, fucking three foot thick cable, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and all of these wires are rated to handle a very small amount of current. You know, they're, they're just sending cat videos back and forth. Yeah. Um, or porn. Yeah, cat videos. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, the problem... With, with a solar flare and electromagnetic magnetic radiation is that these cables are very, very vulnerable to disruption from electromagnetic radiation because they're, they're sitting on the ground. Um, and what this, this electromagnetism can do is induce a current into these cables hundreds of times more than they're rated for. It will literally melt the cables. Uh, and, and, you know, if there's no cables connecting the, the, the you know, server banks, the internet's going to shut down. Or, or at least large swaths of the internet will be unavailable to large groups of people. Yeah. And... Now, where's the central... <coughs> in, um, where's the central internet bank set out of? Uh, so um, there are, are different server banks stationed across the world. Yeah. Um, there, there's there's a link between China and Japan. If that link go down, uh, China just is, is, has no internet. So it's centered, it's stationed in Japan, but moves through China. For that specific Yes, connection. for that particular branch. <coughs> Um, but, like, I'm sure we have one that connects to Canada. I, I believe, but we all have the land connection there, so it, it doesn't matter so much undersea, whatever. Oh, because our cables are buried. I believe so, okay. yeah. Um, yeah it, it's it's mostly the undersea cables that are, that are essentially exposed. Um, so nationalism is really going to, like... <laughs> yeah, so so this kind of role... Um, all of the the other things we've been seeing with uh, Web three and all that um, decentralized internet. Yeah, do you want to talk a little bit more about Web three? We've never talked about it on our show. Yeah, so um, we we there are some things that we don't necessarily go into a whole lot of detail about because they relate heavily to to a certain topic we don't really want to discuss. I mean, we can talk for hours about it, but we shouldn't. You can sh- talk for hours <laughs> about it. Um, I sound insane because no one knows what I'm talking about, but 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 trust me, just th- you, just th- you will know what I'm talking just, about. Just thank your subreddit and you can move on. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so Web3 is, is essentially the next internet. It, it, it's, it's going to be completely decentralized and, and like 
power to the users, power to the creators, not not these, you know, big corporations that were just harvesting your data to, to sell ads to you, um, or sell your data to advertising companies to, to control what you buy or what you think. So that's 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 another issue. Let's talk about Facebook. Facebook has has um, come under fire recently to the point where they've tried changing their name to, to, to get away from the, the bad press. They, it's worse than that. Yeah. So. Like, no, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> came out and said that he wants to, like, create a yeah. completely different, like, an all-encompassing yeah, social so, media network. And, and so while I believe that something like that could be beneficial... If Zuckerberg is anywhere near it, I want nothing to do with it. Well, so, okay, here's my here's my take with Zuckerberg. I don't know anything about the guy. Uh, if, with everything that's gone on in the past, with, like, obviously with, like, stuff getting hacked and stuff getting stolen and stuff getting sold that he's at the head of, I don't think that Zuckerberg has done anything intentionally malicious. I don't think that he himself would do anything with an intent to harm anyone, but when you are surrounded on all sides by people that don't have, with bad faith actors, I guess I'll say, it's kind of hard to regulate what thoughts are yours and what thoughts come from people that are money hungry. So, I disagree. I've I've been reading quite a bit and based on the documents from whistleblowers, uh, he is in complete control of, of all of the misinformation that gets posted on Facebook. All, all of the, the psychological experiments that, that get run on users, he is aware of it and chooses money over user safety every time. Well, I mean, for a business tycoon, that would make sense. Not necessarily. Um, <coughs> you, you the want... actual Lex Luthor of our day. I mean, kind of, yeah. Um, no, so with the exception of Jeff Bezos, who's actually Lex Luthor at this point. There's um, policies on Facebook's books to prevent the spread of misinformation. However, there is a white list of people who are exempt from this because it would create a PR issue. So, so there are some people who are legitimately allowed to post misinformation to Facebook because it would be a PR issue for Facebook. And that is absolutely not okay. You, you shouldn't... <coughs> the terrorist attack on, on January 6th was set up on Facebook. And, and there are chat logs that that say oh well i'm i do you know who tells mike pence he, he can't post that on facebook fuck no and and that that is just fucking bullshit if you're posting misinformation it shouldn't matter who you are it shouldn't matter what your connections are you shouldn't be posting things that that are dangerous and detrimental to society it, it, if you're just saying something like I eat ass, you know, that, that, that's fine. If, if you have something pointed to say, that's one thing. It is entirely a different thing when the things you're saying cause harm to other people. And I, I believe that there is, there is more than enough evidence to show that Facebook, through its policies and, and its whitelist for, for certain users, has caused harm to everyone whether or not they've used facebook or not and not just facebook but also like the the subsidiaries that run through facebook yeah, so facebook has its claws in just about every corner of the internet and i was gonna i was gonna shine some light on the the ongoing instagram issue yeah with um like and i can't help but be perfectly blunt about this but like young teenage girls Mm-hmm. are the most susceptible to the biggest harm from Instagram. And Facebook has done studies on this to confirm that and continues to do what they're doing anyway. 
Welcome to Deviating Tangents, <laughs> where Scott literally hates every big business that has ever existed. That, that's not necessarily true. I just, you know, I have like, problems. Like, I, I understand when something is truly evil, yeah. and you point the finger at the evil thing and say, this is evil. But it seems to me... Now, if... If... if and most likely, but if, because I don't have any, I don't have literally legions of lawyers to search through every piece of paper yeah. of every document to say what is for truly the de facto <laughs> thing to be agreeing with here. But with Facebook, I can, I can believe that there's a bunch of bullshit going on there. Yeah. And like, yes, obviously point the big finger at the evil thing and call it evil. But Scott, you do this with stuff that is, like, on a minute level. You do this to things just that annoy you. I mean, that that's that's fair, but, like... What happened to the topic of this episode being what would happen <laughs> if we lived in a debt-free society? Uh, welcome to Deviating Tangents, the show where we do that. <laughs> um, we still got four minutes. <laughs> so, so, yeah. What would you do? If we didn't have to worry about money. So I would like to get back into programming. I, I, I like making computers do what I want them to do. And, and I like the, the problem solving that comes along with that. And, and the learning that goes hand in hand. Um, the, the, with, with programming, there's a million ways to do the same thing. You're looking for, you know, the most efficient way for for the memory that you're using. Um, like, yeah, you can write a, a program that has 700,000 lines, but that's going to take considerably about me more memory than writing it on a single line with, yeah. with you know, more efficient code. Although, if, if, if you can turn 700,000 into a single line, you're, you're a programming god. Yeah. But, um, <coughs> um, I like creating things. I, I like being able to say, this thing didn't exist. I did something, and, and now, now it, it does exists. Ex yeah. It, to my exact specifications, because... Yeah, you could just go buy a run-of-the-mill product off the shelf, but, like... When you can make your own. Yeah, especially because any any um, item that you see in, in a commercial store or something like that is going to be marketed towards the widest audience possible. Yeah. And if you want something, you know, more specific than that, you're either looking at paying out the ass or doing it yourself. Yeah. That's like, I started... Um started getting into cooking lately mm -hmm. and well not lately over the past couple months but it's like i wanted to make my own bread mm -hmm. bread is a super simple thing to make a, a staple for for every nation out there literally because like you said you can when you make something yourself you can tweak it exactly mm -hmm. to your own specifications i wanted to start making my own bread because there was no pre-made loaf of bread that I particularly found to be the best option. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking bread, I mean just like if you go to like any nice restaurant and they serve you like rolls with dinner or like bring out like a large crusty loaf of bread, mm -hmm. like just plain old, just regular white Italian-ish bread. Like that's what I'm talking about. And I'm just like, if I get all the ingredients and it's like four ingredients, that's bread flour, yeast, salt, sugar, water, the taste comes from the bread flour in in chemical conjunction with the amount of sugar and the amount of salt that you put into the bread. You can tweak that. You can. There's a King Arthur recipe on my and, King Arthur bread flour. And and the hydration of the flour as yes. well. So how much like, water? Like there's you put there's in. so many things that you can do to affect the taste of your bread when it's done. I don't follow the exact specifications on the back of my King Arthur flour bag because it tastes a way that I'm not fond of. Maybe I'll add a little more salt if I want a saltier bread. Maybe I'll add a little more sugar if I want a sweeter bread. And it's just with that level of like precise control mm -hmm. is you can literally make anything you want as long as you're willing to get your hands dirty and like actually learn this. And that's what I do in a society where I didn't have to worry about that. I'd like learn as many things 
is oh, cooking awesome is a skill that everyone should have. Like, I think my priority would be travel. Yeah. Like, is it like if every month like a balance showed up in my bank account of like here's your basic living arrangements for the month, I just like travel every I travel over the whole country. So I I read a thing that um, was interesting. So I believe it's Amtrak. Um, you can buy a rail car, and then like they'll attach it to their trains and just like drop you off places. That's pretty cool. And and like while you're attached to the train, you you have power, you have water, you you have I want to say internet. I'm not real sure on that one. Right. And and like they'll they'll just drop you off at at, at any station that you want. Huh. And just leave you there for yeah. do you have to rent on the track or I, I think there's there's like a, a, a train yard or something hmm. where, where they'll detra- detach you from from the train is it like like a nice train yard or <laughs> yeah. is it like I, I, I don't have a whole bunch of information like, but like you say train yard I'm like yeah it's con- it would be cool and convenient <laughs> to own my own rail car and go yeah. anywhere in the world that's connected to tracks but then it's like yeah and they just drop you off and I'm thinking like <laughs> this haunted <laughs> graveyard of trains it's like I'm never gonna see another human being again am oh. I that really be a bad thing i mean it depends on your on your state of being i like yeah, that's i want to like people <laughs> i can't even say i like people but i want to li- i need to reprogram my brain yeah to be able to the, the this whole shut down everything has been very detrimental to, yeah. to the collective mental health of people in general like i yeah. need i feel like i need to take classes <laughs> On how to how to interact with people and interact yeah. with a group of people. I don't know. I'm sure it's something that it's just like jump back into the swing of things. But it's like we've said on the show before. It's like we don't really have friends. Well, I mean, we do. Just we not do, but it's it's circles. not it's not like hey, I'm going to so and so's this Friday, yeah, and yeah. three other people are being are going to be there. You in? It's like I have I have like three people that I talk to a yeah. couple times a month. But like majority of the people i talk to are are not in this state yeah like there there's there's the 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 one in in a different country the other one on the other side of the country and then the the people on the reddits yeah so that's why we need to protect the underwater (laughs) so that all of our friendships don't go away the internet has has brought us together globally in in a huge huge way there there is there is um a spread of information now that our ancestors could only dream of yeah it's all accessible at your fingertips you you have the the collective wealth of human knowledge at your fingertips at all times and you use it to watch cat videos yeah yeah congrats and your grandparents use it to complain about their their minority neighbor next door up at three in the morning yep yep because on it's... facebook <laughs> that sums up this episode in a nutshell doesn't it you know those people who who post on their walls that oh facebook doesn't have permission to use anything i'm posting and read the fucking tos it doesn't matter what you post it belongs to facebook yeah they own you yeah i don't want to end this talking about facebook so i guess i'm gonna go over some roll call with the show going forward as of episode eight we're gonna do a little bit of just a how do i want to say this a slight change in how we go about episodes it's it came to our attention perhaps a little too late that uh an hour and a half long episode is a bit much uh, and especially when we don't have advertisers to appease, we can kind of make these episodes as long as we want. Yeah, we, we, we don't have a set time slot or anything. It yeah. just goes for how long it goes. So I, I figured it would probably forward if we just make shorter episodes, so like half an hour roughly, and maybe do multiple times a week. So if Monday's episode isn't a topic that interests you, maybe we can maybe there's something we're talking about on like a Thursday that jives with you more and then that following Monday it's an interesting topic again mm-hmm. it's just we're the, even though 
we've been doing this for a couple months now and nothing's set in stone we can change stuff on the fly if we need to so that that is the the beauty of not being beholden to advertisers yeah i've i've, I've got one more thing to say for speaking of the the, the reddits and and connecting everyone if video games have taught me anything it's that if you're encountering in if you're encountering enemies you're going the right way so progression want, is also usually left i want to give a huge shout out to gme jungle for being one of the best subreddits on the website run by the absolute best mods on the platform uh pink hats on asset body surf dan keep doing what you're doing you're fantastic there's gonna be this huge sting tomorrow yeah <laughs> And then just like, does it all go away? But it's like, no, this is a completely horrible, degenerate subreddit. <laughs> it's like everyone in here is like secretly a child molester and stuff. No, no, and then no. Like, then you call me. It's like, we can't post this episode on Monday. <laughs> oh, boy. But uh, we will see you guys next time in episode nine of the Deviating Tangents podcast. We have no idea what we're going to talk about. We don't script these shows. We just have a loose idea, and then we... You know what the show is about. We, we, we wanted to talk about being creative, and we touched on it for, like, ten seconds, and then... It was <laughs> Facebook bad! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>